Why you gonna- Oh! If you are watching this video, chances are you and I have something in common. Whether that be anime, filmmaking, movies, drones, cool stuff, you are here in the right place. And we're talking today about something that encapsulates all of those things. If you know me or watch any of my videos or subscribe to the channel, my name is Kai. And for the last year and a half, I have been messing with these guys. With that little guy in the wall, this is the FPV system. And this basically allows me to put on these bad boys and I can look through the eyes of my drone and fly acrobatically, whether you want me to do flips, rolls, go through windows, go above buildings, dive down buildings, you name it. It is now all possible with this incredible new technology, FPV, and combining that with these guys. These are GoPros or action cameras. You can slap them onto your drone because they have enough thrust to be able to carry them. And now we can get some really juicy, nice, high quality 4K, even 5K footage with these GoPros. Only issue is that if we want to take this a step further, like my dream is essentially to be able to use these guys to film on movie sets, whether it be a Marvel film or a live action anime or an action John Wick type of deal. I want to be able to pilot these guys in a very specific way so that I can do these rolls and flips and be able to complement the action using these awesome cameras. But if I'm going to be on the big screen, if these drones are going to make it into cinema, we can't be using these little GoPros. They're awesome, but still they have a long way to go before they can catch up to cameras like this, which is the Sony a6500 I'm using right now, or the a7 or Blackmagic, or any of these top of the line digital cameras that get bigger and bigger and bigger. It gets way bigger. So I would not be able to use this to carry something so heavy like this guy. So what we need to do now is we need to take it a level up. Cinelifting is a new class of drones that are way bigger, probably like three, four times the size, uh, have way more propellers, bigger propellers, more power, much scarier, much louder, but they are capable of carrying these cinema cameras. So we are entering a space where it is super possible for us to start doing this. And so my next mission was to build a Cinelifter. And let me tell you, this was quite the mission. Uh, building one of these guys, uh, an FPV drone was already pretty challenging for someone just jumping in with uh, cold feet, but this guy was a whole new level. This was twice the amount of carbon. This was eight mortars instead of four. Pillars are way bigger, way more parts, way more electronics to wire, way more bugs to troubleshoot. Oh my goodness. It was not super easy, but thankfully, because of the internet and because of kind people on Facebook, the FPV Cinelifters group, uh, YouTube videos that people have been kind enough to make and share their own journeys, I was able to finally figure out. And after maybe like a week of trying to build, yes, it took me a week. It'll probably not take me any longer. Um, but in the future, now I know how to do it. And voila, we had it complete. So after a week of finagling, building, realizing it didn't work, and then trying to build it again, and reassembling and doing all of that, we made it happen. We actually managed to construct it. So let me show it to you guys right now. This is a five inch FPV drone. It is um, a pretty standard drone. This is what you'll see most FPV pilots rocking. It is powerful enough to carry a GoPro and maybe like mini cameras that are slightly heavier, but this is still not enough to carry the big cameras. What can carry the big cameras is this guy. This is a Cinelifter, this is the dark dark. This is the big guy. Yeah, I'm really excited because I spent a lot of time building it. But as you can see, quite the size difference. This is the Shen Drones Thick version 2.0 designed by Andy Shen, who makes awesome, awesome drone frames. He also made this Cinewhoop, which is one of my main drivers. This thing is amazing. But when you need a bigger camera, you need a bigger drone. And this guy is a 6S. 8 motor X8 drone, 7 to 8 inch propellers. These things are huge, man. 
and yeah, twice the amount of carbon. It's got nice legs. But besides that, um, it is pretty similar to this. So they aren't that different technologically. This is just super big. It's really scary and really freaking awesome to fly around. <laughs> so this is a 4S battery. This is what goes on top of this guy and it powers it for about four to five minutes. I used to think these were pretty big, especially compared to my Sony batteries. They're not very big at all. These are, these are my Sony batteries, each one of these. So about the same size when you put four of them together. This is the drone we use to fly the Cinelifter. This chonky boy is probably like two, maybe almost three pounds. It is a little bit of a level up and um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm super proud. We had it all built. This guy is all dandy and nice. This is how it looked when I first constructed it, but that wasn't the end of the journey. Building it is one thing, flying it is another. So basically what we had to do is figure out how to get this thing to work. And it took longer than I expected. I thought we were out of the woods once the thing was freaking constructed, but I didn't realize that I was gonna have so much trouble just trying to get it to float. I, so what I did was my very first flight test, I took it out to the field um, with a few friends and a few fellow pilots. And we actually, I spent like maybe the whole day just trying to get it to float. Uh, I put it down, put the propellers on. We armed it the first time. I thought everything was all right. They spun up, which is what they're supposed to do. And then we used the throttle and we pushed up a little bit and it flipped over and that didn't work. I couldn't figure out why. Uh, second time we tried it again. It was doing this weird wobbling thing. And yeah, I, I really didn't, I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. I thought it was, I thought I was dumb. I thought I had put it together wrong. Um, or maybe there's something about the electronics, but I knew that it was there. It was spinning. It just had to coordinate well, well enough for these guys to work together and actually get off the ground. So after like our fifth, sixth, seventh attempt of flipping over and just like things just being very, very scary. This thing is terrifying. I'll, let me tell you. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen my fingers, but I've gotten cut by my five inch drone before and it wasn't pretty. Uh, it, it was actually pretty bad. I still got the scars. Um, so I really don't want to get hit by this thing. I don't want anybody to get hit by this thing. Um, and so we took it out again. We crossed our fingers, prayed to God, and it took off. It took off uh, the sixth or seventh time and oh man. That freaking god works! What? <laughs> I want to say that that was probably the most rewarding part of this experience. But I would be lying because you don't truly have a cine lifter until you're lifting cines. Cinematic cameras. Yeah, so the next thing we had to do was strap my baby, the Sony a6500, onto the drone. So this is the drone and that's my camera right there. This Sony a6500, I've had it and I've been using it for almost four years now. I brought it to China with me when I went to study abroad and it has been my main pilot. That's a toilet. It has been my main pilot ever since I started. And oh man, it's my baby. So um, I really didn't want it, anything bad to happen to it. And if you fly FPV drones, then you know how normal it is for these things to crash. Crashing is almost part of the game when you're learning. So just the thought of strapping, you know, a camera that costs more than the drone itself, like, uh, like considerably more was just like, oh my goodness, and a lens, you know? So um, I had to be mentally ready for it. And so a few more days later, after a little bit more test flights and a little bit more practice and some tuning, um, I finally felt confident enough to strap it on. And uh, we took it to a park and I have heard that in some cases, because of how many moving parts there are for these drones, um, if you don't arm it or, or coordinate it right, and the tune doesn't understand what's happening, it can freak out and it can cause a flyaway. Uh, this is something I learned from Straw Hat Sam, who is also another amazing Cinelifter resource and teacher, um, super smart guy and super kind. He's helped me a lot, but he's had that happen to him before. His drone has literally, while he was testing it, shot up into the sky, like without him wanting to do that. And it fell down back to earth and he had to catch it with his hands and he got cut up. So that's one of the last things I wanted to happen, especially when I was testing in an open field. It was an open field, but there was still a playground over there. So I, um, I made sure that I had enough space, even if it did go off into the air, that it would not hit the kids. But yeah, so 
go, I went ahead and strapped it on and, you know, uh, shivering, shaking, a lot of nerves. Um, but we just sent it. We just armed it and we hovered it and we had a lift off. All right, guys. It's going down. Please. With that test, we got our very first successful cinematic Cinelifter footage with the Shendrone stick and the Sony A6500. While it's not perfectly tuned, as you can see in the footage, it's still very shaky. You can see a lot of jitters because there are just so many parts to this drone and so many things you have to do to make it fly smoothly, which I'm still working on. This was a step in the right direction, especially considering what with what people have been doing um, already with Captain Vanover on Justin Bieber's music video and Johnny FPV and people in Mr. Robot, you know, like they've been using FPV, taking it to the next level is gonna be just amazing. And I can't wait for more opportunities to use it. It's gonna be scary, not gonna lie, like this is just the beginning of the journey. Um, if you are gonna get into cine lifting or FPV drones and you're gonna go on set with them and you're gonna fly, you understand that there are real life consequences every time you take off. We have to do our due diligence, we have to learn, make mistakes on our own, when we have the space and the capacity and the safety and then take it out into the real field and get that footage that has never been gotten before. It is really a journey and I love the high risk of things. I love the high risk and the high reward. And if you like these things and you think this is something you enjoy, whether it be FPV or making films or telling stories, then I highly recommend and highly would love for you to join me on my journey. Please go ahead and subscribe if you liked this video or you like what you see because you will definitely be seeing more of it. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I will see you in the next one and we are just beginning. This has been Kai and I'll see you next one. Peace.